Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to part two of today's stream. We are doing some more of our fiend tales for 10-2. We are in chapter three. I have a snack. We got some, um, we got from Publix some wings and sushi. So I have some sushi right here, some Publix sushi. And then um, the wings are getting uh, crispied up right now. I'm going to crisp them up just a little bit more in the air fryer. And uh, I think Levi's going to bring me some. So yeah, let me get the audio going. We're going to eat a piece of sushi. And then we're gonna we're gonna do some more fiend tales. There we go. Get that good song going. This is a tempura shrimp crunchy. Mm-hmm. It's crunchy. I know everything. All right, did I put my team together? I think I did. Yes, okay, we're doing the Rios next. Okay, got it, got it, got it. All right, so Geekstra, I promised you the, the nail story. Okay, so this is more Karen lore. We're doing a lot of Karen lore this stream. It's nice. All right, so I used to suck my fingers as a child. Like these these two, I think it was, or maybe it was these two. I don't remember now, it was a long time ago. And I did that for, for many, many years and continued to do it. Um, and I do have memories of doing that. Eventually I stopped that and it turned into nail biting. And so I was a chronic nail biter throughout the entirety of my childhood. I would bite my nails all the way down to where they would bleed constantly i would constantly have like sores and stuff on on my my nails on my fingers i bit my nails this way until age 27 okay a long ass time and i do not know what happened okay do not ask me how i quit at age 27 i just one day decided for real i was done and if you have ever had like a very serious habit or an addiction that you have beaten or something like that. I think you will relate to this. I don't know what was different about deciding that time I was quitting versus all the other times I had decided I was quitting and it didn't work. I don't know what was different, but it was and I did. And when I realized that I actually had quit, my nails were in such a disgustingly thin, awful state from all of those years of biting them that like I had to actually take care of them or they would break and they would hurt because they would like chip and peel all over the place. And so then I started deciding I wanted to get into actually taking care of my nails. And that was a several year journey. Shout out to Simply No Logical. Oh my God, helped me so much because I have very dramatic C curves just like she does. So a lot of the techniques that she uses for her nails also work on mine. And she basically taught me. And that is how I ended up with such a large nail polish collection. Now, this nail polish collection, uh, do not be deceived. I spend a, a decent amount of money on my top coat and base coat, right? But those colors, those are clean color brand. And they are like less than a dollar a bottle. <laughs> so, you know, do not be fooled. It's not as expensive as it looks behind me. But if you have a good base coat and a good top coat, you can use kind of crappy colors and get away with it. Um, and it still looks good because no one's going to get like that up close on your nails. Even like when I when I do this to the camera and I show them, right? No one's even getting that close as what you guys are seeing uh, on the camera. So, you know. Um, you don't have to be, they don't have to be like that perfect high quality colors if you have a good high quality base coat and top coat, which I do. Polo Taco brand, by the way, that's, um, that's Simply Nail Logical's brand is great. Uh, you, you might even forget that it's an influencer brand sometimes because it's, it is high quality, very, very good. And I do have some, some of her polishes back there, especially the toppers and stuff. I really love her toppers. Of course, as Hollow Taco, you know. Her hollow toppers are amazing. So yeah, that's my nail story. All right, we're gonna do the tournament again, and then we should be able 
to do the fiend tail for him. And I'm gonna eat this crispy, crunchy sushi. I'm look there we go. I'm looking forward to this fiend tale. The last Chimera fiend tale was so funny. That was the Uchi family. So I'm looking forward to this one. I hope it will be just as funny. For real, right, Possum? I like the music in 10 too a lot. I mean, the music in 10 is, music is very important to 10. And I think they elevate that theme in 10 too, with the music just being like really special in like an, an extra way. And having the story focus on an, um, an ancient songstress, like that helps too. But yeah, because in 10, you know, with the, the Hem of the Faith and all that stuff that they do. Like, music's very important in 10. I think just for the world of Spira in general. Oh, winner, winner. Okay. Which Final Fantasy has the best music? Oh, God. It's really hard for me to not say 10. You know what I'm saying? Because there's certain musical things that just hit me because it's so emotional for me. So I don't know if I'm being fair, if I'm kind of like Pixarifying it <laughs> and saying that I love the music because it, it makes me feel the feels, you know? <laughs> I don't know, but I do love the love Ten's music. I, I do think it's my favorite. All right, let's see if uh, Rios is ready. What about what about you, Geek Strux? I know you played all, basically all the Final Fantasies. What what type of music do you like? No, you're correct. Ten has the best music. Okay, good. <laughs> so it's not just like. My, my glasses on about uh, how much I love 10. Have you heard of um, Aki Kuroda's piano version of, of 10? I probably have, but it doesn't, when you say that, it doesn't ring a bell, but I bet you I have. Um, just like seen it on YouTube or things like that, you know? Because <clears throat> I've listened to lots of 10 covers. All right. This is a long time ago now, but I used to be an engineer in Bevel. I was in my workshop all day and night with schematics, creating one innovation after the other. One of my proudest achievements is the gondola that she used to ride the shoe fluff to the moon flow. It took me three years to invent that. I still remember the happy faces of the Hypello when I brought it. Did I invent anything else? Of course. In fact, 
There is one that I consider my magnum opus, and that is the lifts flying around inside Yevon headquarters. An ideal mode of transport, is it not? The bigwigs over at the temple were so thrilled when it was completed. I was on cloud nine. But truth be told, there are some things I invented that I'm not too proud of. Oh, excuse me. I built terrible weapons like the Yaks and the Yaws, but in the name of keeping Bevel safe. One day, one of the mechs I built went berserk due to a design flaw. I had forgotten how to stop them, and the wild mechs slaughtered my team before escaping. Some story, right? My friends, all killed by something I created. I've never built any weapons since. Listen to this. I've got a job request. A little bit of a rush job, mind you. Uh, someone I know in Bevel has been trapped in a passageway due to a mechanical problem, so they need me to fix it. The area is right around where I used to work. Don't worry, I won't mess up this time. I must say I'm pretty excited. I haven't gotten many requests after, well, you know, becoming a fiend. <laughs> I love all the compositions, but I love 10 in every aspect. I'm a huge fan of Kingdom Hearts. I think it's gonna, I'm gonna stream all of that, the games, yeah. For sure, Geekstra, I have thought about that. Like if I'm, if I play through like, all the Final Fantasies on stream in the way that I want to, and I and I am still like interested in that being like the brand, right? Kingdom Hearts would be a great place to go from there because I love the Kingdom Hearts games too. Well, the numbered ones. <laughs> I can't say I'm much of a fan of the extra shoot. Uh, you know, it, it gets a little weird. It's all it gets a little weird. But the one, two, and three, like I love those. Just started playing ten due to a moving piano version of Via Purifico. Oh my god, really? Before playing 10, the music made me dream a lot about that place. It was kind of mad. Yay, wings! Thank you! Okay, got it. They look delicious. And was kind of mad, although super relevant to Yuna's development. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. That's, that's probably not one of the main places you would think of, but the Via Purifico becomes very important in 10, too. It transforms into a place called the Via Infinito. And it's a big 100 floor dungeon that you go down and you fight the biggest boss at the end. It's like an optional boss, Trema, and he has a speech. Anyway, it's great if you, if you know anything about it. If you don't, I would look it up, Trema. Trema is the boss, it's great. All right, let's see about Ryos. Oh, we're in Bavel now. So you think you, what do you think of my invention, Mr. Rescue? It's great. Your inventions are always so useful. What's that sound? Help! This YSLS-0 is malfunctioning. This is the Berserk machine, machine soldier I built way back when. Intruder, eliminate. This thing has been wandering around here all this time? It's time for a showdown with my past. Yeah, beat him up. Everyone, it'll be all right. Stay behind me. I'll terminate this routine. Just in case of these types of incidents. I had installed an emergency shutdown switch here. Oh my god, he remembered where his switch was. Way to go, genius inventor. That one was touch and go for a while, but I'm gonna keep inventing anyway. Oh my gosh. But I won't create destructive weapons like I did in my human days. Good! From now on, my inventions will only help others, not hurt them. Don't worry, we found some of your machina that were built for battle actually are wanting to help, like the Blitzball one, and like the Kiki robot that that jumps people up the, the thing. So like, yeah, it's working. All right, what have I got now? Okay, we have two slots now. Let's go try to catch the last two that we need, which funny enough, are Machina. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see about it. I would say that my top five Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy games would be 10, uh, 7, 8, 10, 2, and 16. I'm gonna switch 16 for 9. A lot of people love 9. I need to play it. I need to play it. Um, okay, so Bavel, yeah. Yeah, it's in Bavel. So we're gonna do these medium ones in Bavel. Detonator? Uh, that's not on my list. But, uh, okay. Sure. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. 
Okay. Okay, yes, this is one of the ones I wanted. Yao 71. Is detonator, am I not remembering it because it's one of those lives to fight ones? I guess we should go look. Okay, let's strike through that. Uh, creature creator menu. And then, yeah, creature history. Yeah, what is this? Huh. Interesting. That, he was not on my list. I, I wonder how we missed one. Well, I'm glad we caught him. Okay. Okay, well, extra fiend. Extra fiend that I didn't think I, I needed. <clears throat> All right, who's next? Protean gel, okay. So my plan after 10-2 is to play through all of the 1 through 6 pixel remasters. So that's what we're going to end up doing after this. But we've still got quite a lot to go on this. Because you, you need end up needing to play this game five times to see all the different um, options for, like, who who's accused for Mehen Mayhem. So there's still going to be two more playthroughs that we'll do even after this one. All right, let's Grand Cup. I actually never played any of the OG ones, but will someday. Yeah, so that's why part of why I want to do it, because for those ones, the only one I've ever eaten is six. And the other ones, like, it's uh, kind of varied about whether how much I've played of it and how familiar I am with it. So, but, like, they're old games, right? So I feel like there should be guides and stuff. So I want to do kind of like a combo first playthrough slash 100%, like trying to get 100% on a first playthrough of, of all the pixel remasters. I think that would be fun. That's what we're going to do. sushi left but I'm gonna switch over and eat my wings here's the wings that he brought it's a barbecue one and I can't remember what he said for this one but it looks like lemon pepper okay yeah, because a lot of the OG ones just never even came out in the US a lot of us like missed those you know Which is basically what happened to me. It was just too hard. It was too hard to, to get them in the U.S. Because they really did not release here. Even when it's my gel waiting for that animation, I swear, like, it is, it's too long. That animation's too long. Y'all gotta fix that. Y'all gotta fix that, 10 2. Skip protein, skip the gel animation.
Nice job. That was a good one. Two more, two more battles. Oh, I forgot to mute. They're probably hearing all kind of noises. Worst Final Fantasy game? That is quite the question. That is quite the question. I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> Wrong arm. Protein and jelly is ready. Put these back on, then we'll read it. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I have a worse Final Fantasy game. I was um pretty unsympathetic. I was pretty unsympathetic to Squall in 8 when that first came out. So being like a little contrarian, you know, and I didn't really understand him. I had no such issues with Titus. A lot of people hate on Titus. I had no such issues. I did have issues with Squall. So out of the ones that I can say that I've played a lot of, it would have to be, it would have to be eight. But there's, I mean, I've heard like four is the worst, but I've, you know, barely touched it. So like, I really cannot say, you know, I cannot say. So yeah. Hey, Geekstra, were you in the ad? I, I answered your question kind of sort of, so I'll, I'll say that again if you're in the ad. So I think out of the ones I played a lot of, I would have to say eight. Um, because I just didn't connect with Squall when I played it when it came out. But playthroughs that I've watched since then, I, I understand him a bit better. Oh, you weren't in an ad? Okay, good. I said that some people were. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, I can't think of any that I haven't really, I haven't really enjoyed them all, yeah. Yeah, I think that all the Final Fantasies have some kind of merit to them, so it's, like, really hard to say. But maybe once I get through more of them with these Pixel Remasters, I'll have a better answer for you. So ask me again this time in, like, uh, in 2025, right? <laughs> so, yeah. All right. My body is made of dreams. No, I don't mean that in some romantic way. I subsist by absorbing human dreams into my body is all. In such a dreamless age, there's nothing I crave more than the adventuring spirit of sphere hunters. Such delicious looking recklessness. I must get a taste of these gull wings. Brother's dream. Oh my god, we get to see all their dreams. Okay, okay. Okay, tell me, brother. He's dreaming about Yuna. He's dreaming about Yuna, isn't he? Let's start with Car... Car... Car uncle? Kunkle headed? Let's start with Kunkle head here, okay. Oh my, this dream is as vapid as his face when he's sleeping. Yuna, Yuna. I knew it! Unrequited love? Don't run through a field of flowers. You don't have the face for it. 
Uh, let's just suck this all up and move on to the next one. Oh my gosh. I liked Zodiac Age, but I don't remember much of it. I didn't play too much of Eleven back in the day, so I didn't have the little online adapter. Oh yeah, I loved Eleven. The combat is slow though. The combat was slow for an MMO, but I did play it and I did enjoy it. Um, I like Zodiac Age. I like Zodiac Age a lot better than the original 12. The original 12, Garment Grid, I mean not Garment Grid, <laughs> uh, License Grid thing is annoying as fuck. Um, and Zodiac Age is a little bit better because you get a little bit more freedom of choice. Still a little annoying, but I like, I like 12. Um, Zodiac Age especially. All right, Pain's Dream. Hmm, what's this? Her sleep is quite restless. It must be a nightmare. Crimson, what does that mean? It appears this one has a dark past she'd rather not reveal. In any case, this Nuge fellow seems to appear quite often. Well, bitter dreams can be tasty as well. Riku's Dream. A massive machina rumble with her father and brother, eh? Well, now the whole of Spira will be destroyed at this rate. I know it's just a dream, but are all Albed this aggressive? It's been a while since I've seen such a tempestuous dream. I shall partake of it while it's still fresh. All right, let's release him. <coughs> Most delectable. Your dream. And yours. There's only one left. Why were they sleeping in the hallway? I wonder, what does a high summoner dream of? <laughs> oh no, what's Yuna's dream gonna be? <clears throat> Does he put them to sleep then take her to dreams? Because they're just like laying on the ground. There's no way they sleep like that. I've got chicken in my tooth. I have Strangers in Paradise but haven't played that at all yet. Yeah, I haven't played that either. I can smell a dream on the second floor. So Yuna's sleeping in a bed, that makes sense. And there's empty beds next to her. I don't understand why these people are in the hallway. <laughs> Found you. I should say that 7 Remake is probably in my top five as far as games go. Loved it so much. Yeah, that one's really good. Time to eat. Ah, a grand dream worthy of a high summoner. Let us see. Ah, uh, this is most... quite a mouthful. How could it be so big? This is bad. I can't absorb it all. <laughs> if I eat any more, I'll burst. <laughs> That's what she said. He burst. Wow. Hmm. I feel like I've seen this hentai before. Yuna can't eat any more. Oh, she was dreaming about eating? Oh my god. What the heck? <clears throat> 
That one was very strange. <laughs> There's some really crazy ones. Well, let's try to get that last medium in Bevel. There we go. Yak 62. So funny, I never knew about Rule 34 until a few years ago, and it cracks me up when I hear things like that are so sus. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you avoided Rule 34 until a few years ago, but that feels very lucky. Um, I want to live that life. <laughs> well, that, that blissful, unknowing life. <laughs> Too bad you didn't stay that way, huh? All right, let's uh, put somebody else in. Okay, tentacles. Here we go. Rule 34. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, watch this one, this one, like, be totally, like, benign and, uh, and wholesome. I was watching a stream and they kept saying Rule 34 and I was like, what is that? Oh, and you Googled and you learned. Oh, I see, I see. And they told me and I started chuckling, yeah. Yeah, Rule 34 is a thing. Um, but I guess, I, I guess, depending on what corners of the internet you've been on, it wouldn't be, you wouldn't necessarily, like, know what it is. Like, if you came across it in passing, it wouldn't necessarily, like, you wouldn't think anything of it in most places. Alright, here we go. Let's get tentacles leveled up. Funny stuff for sure. I mean, I don't look up that kind of stuff. I can just imagine. Not that crazy. <laughs> well, you know, there's everything on the internet. Whatever you can imagine, someone has already created it. Whatever that is. So, you know. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Definitely already exists. It doesn't matter what you're thinking. It's there. battle of this one. Let's tournament it up again. I feel like I need a toothpick. I think I might go. I think I might go fix this real quick. Give me like two seconds. Y'all can watch this uh, this battle while I'll uh, I'll be right back.
All right, I'm here. I'm here. I, I had to. I had to. It was gonna drive me crazy. Couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle something stuck in my teeth. Here we go, final fight. Just get him before he does the stupid reflect. There we go. All right, time to see Tentacle's fiend tail. Watch it be like the most wholesome, endearing one. Even though we've seen all this craziness. All right. I beg your pardon, but did you by chance see a pot of some kind in this area? It's just an average pot that looks like you could buy it anywhere, but to me, that ordinary pot is my precious home. One day when I woke up, the pot, my home, was gone. Well, it probably just got dragged away by the strong tide from the storm the other day, but the wife is pretty upset. She kept yelling and told me to go find it. The wife can be a bit scary. She told me not to come back until I find it. In our world, the measure of a man's pot is the measure of his worth. I remember the wife used to complain about how cramped the previous pot was. If I don't return this time with a bigger pot, I'll most likely be strangled. I know, I know, but really, it, it's my fault. The wife, she used to be really great, you know? The reason why she became like that is because I'm such a good-for-nothing loser. Um, do you think if I train here, I can become a better, stronger man? Oh my, dude, just don't go. Just don't go back. Just stay. In the end, I didn't find the pot, but I've decided to go back to the wife and kids at the bottom of the ocean anyway. Oh my god, there's kids involved. I think I can assert myself more with my wife now. I'll just tell her to stick it if she doesn't like the house. I feel much more confident now, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you so much. The funniest one so far is the eat me I want to be eaten. Yeah, that one was ridiculous. <laughs> <clears throat> the cheerful yet wary tentacle returns to the deep sea where his family awaits. I'll be there soon. Mommy, where's daddy? How many times do I have to tell you? You have a new daddy. Hey, I'm home. Look, it's Daddy. Have you been good? Oh, you're still alive, dear? Oh my god, she is mean. That's no great way to greet your husband. I won't just let it pass. Not today. Huh. Hey, sweetheart. What? Oh my god, the new man's gigantic. What do we have here? An old flame? Uh. Uh. Hmm. 
Dude, just apologize to your kids and get out of there. I don't think you can do anything about this situation. That new guy's gigantic. This is not worth it. I'm sorry. I seem to have the wrong house. Oh no, not like that. Oh my god. Oh, he's running away. No, dude, come on. You know, you need to at least tell the kids what's go what's up. I wish I was tough. Oh, lonely tentacles entered the fiend arena. Okay. Oh my gosh. What the heck? Okay, maybe he is a coward. Maybe there's a reason his wife is such a bitch to him. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> oh, there's no more to trap. We've gotten them all. Okay. All right, fishy time. Let's go. Since we have to do each of these mediums one by one, now I am questioning if we're gonna finish chapter three this episode, but we're still gonna try. We're still gonna try. There's, after we finish these fiend tales, there's not much more of chapter three we have to do. There we go, Flares, how you doing? Lady just gave me a look, but then she left. I thought she was going to hop up here. <clears throat> we were going to have another camera invasion of Lady Tail. But no, she's going to go do something else, I guess. Oh, he can learn Kiraga? That's cool. Winner! He's got lots, so we gotta go again. Okay. Yeah, so it is two. For the most of them, it's uh, it's gonna be two tournaments. We'll get them enough. There we go. Do fast battles. Try to get as many of the rest of these fiend tails in to this episode.
Flare. All right, let's see about his fiend tail. Oh, he needs one more, dang it. Okay. What if we battle simulator one of the harder battles? Yeah, let's like let's do like the claret dragon. Maybe that'll level him. There we go. Okay, now he'll have a finished fiend tail. Alright. I first met him at Oh, thank you. Um, I first met him at a Blitzball tournament two years ago. I said hello to him and he was staring intensely at the ocean right before a game. Any topic I threw at him, he would respond in the same voice. I'll do my best. The fifth time he said it, we both burst into laughter. I guess I became his fan because I wanted to see that smile again. After the tournament, the Aurochs were mobbed by fans. I looked around for him, but no luck. I waited at the same spot on the docks, hoping to meet him as his ship left for Besaid. I might have been fate, but he came but just before I left. We got to talk again. As the ship departed, he called out, keep rooting for us. His voice almost sounded a little sad. I wish I could hear his voice just once more. I visited Besaid several weeks later. Showing me around the island, he seemed happy, embarrassed, and confused. The sun reflected off the ocean differently than in Luca, he told me, and he loved his little island. That was our first date, I suppose. Seeing him practice there on the sunny beach, I slowly grew more and more fond of him. We promised to meet each other again at the same spot in Luca when the next tournament took place, but I became a fiend before that. Two years have passed since then. Tournaments have come and gone, but the Aurochs remain as popular as ever. With so many pretty young girls chasing him, he surely must have forgotten about me by now, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. What is this one? He hasn't forgotten about you. There's no way. I heard the Aurochs were holding a training camp here. So why did I come here? He can't possibly remember our promise. Oh! The Aurochs were just as I remembered them. I felt so nostalgic and sad. I felt as if I could just vanish right there and then. But at that moment, I thought that I heard a voice. His voice. Which one is it? <gasps> oh, a little character development for him. That's Jasu, right? Hey! Will there be a heartbreak shot again this year? Oh no, that one's Jasu. Which one are you? Which one's the redhead? Here.
So he has a special shot too, heartbreak shot. <gasps> oh, it may go. <gasps> wow. That's so anime. I'd like to see her again. Oh, Bada. Okay, Bada's the redhead one. Not a heartbreak shot, but a heart full shot. 30 years later, Bada's retirement match. It is said that he stands the same girl who was there on that day long ago. Aww, oh, I like that one. I like that one. Very cute. Okay, let's add. It's so sad. Yeah, that one was sad. What could have been, you know, what could have been. I like that they gave one of the Aurochs a, uh, a little bit of, like, character development with that. That was very cute. All right, now we're gonna level up the Lucafila. You know, if that detonator was missing from my notes, I bet there's others that were missing too. We'll have to figure that out when we get to that point. Because I just looked through, like, my my main dock of notes, and it's not in the future. Detonator's not in the future um, chapters, so I don't know. What's up with that? Welcome back from the ad, my friends. Thank you so much for tolerating that. I really appreciate it. I would turn ads off at Twitch, let me... It is, it is very annoying that no ads is not a Twitch option. That's an option on YouTube. I can post a video and not, not do ads on it at all, period. Twitch should let me do that. It should let me have a no ad stream. I only got ads when I first joined the stream. Well, that's good. I'm sure it varies, like, on your location as well. On, like, if you actually get the ad break pop-up or don't get the ad break pop-up, you know? And, and ad blockers might be blocking it as well. But you should all have ad blockers installed. If you do not, then you should. Last battle! And then we should be able to do the team tell for Luca Vila. Team tail bonus! Month 
day? Sunny, several days have passed since the gull wings caught me. At first, I thought they would chop me up and eat me, so I cried every day. But I think I was wrong. But they do make me fight every day, and it really does a number on my skin. But I'm a little surprised to find a whole new side of me. I actually enjoy fighting. Month unknown, day unknown. Sunny, I'm starting to get excited about becoming stronger. Maybe this is the life I'm meant to live. Plus, the gull wings are all very nice to me. But there's one concern that I have, my body. It's embarrassing to even say it. My arms, they just keep getting bigger and bigger. They're like man arms. When I think about it affecting my femininity, I can't sleep at night. Well, I have something to tell you. You don't have arms. Uh, month unknown, day unknown, rain. I've decided that femininity no longer matters. Up until now, I wrote down all my thoughts in this diary, but I can't keep doing that. What matters is action, not thoughts. So I'll start diving in headfirst from now on. From now on, I'm going to be the hero of my own story. Month unknown, day unknown, cloudy. Are you reading my diary? A diary is a sacred text. It shouldn't be read by others and certainly not in secret, but it's all right. I'm thinking of ending the diary anyway. Spending time with all of you has changed me. It won't be easy, but I think I'm ready to start a new path. Could you imagine if they made a 10 remake just like seven? Oh my God. I wish they would. Really? Like, because I think when people that have never played 10 before play it nowadays, a lot of time what happens is they get very frustrated by the random battle system and they get really frustrated by how, except for specific boss fights, the battling is very like rock, paper, scissors. You know, oh, this type of enemy used this character, this type of enemy used that character, right? But I think if they did a remake, they could do a more interesting battle system, or at least a battle system that's more interesting for the for like the everyday regular battles, right? Because the battle system is interesting for the boss battles. Um, but yeah, that would be amazing. It would bring so many new Spira fans, I feel like. Final Fantasy X is Unreal Engine 5. Holy crap, that would be a game of the century, right? Right? Final Fantasy X and Unreal Engine 5 would be a fucking amazing. I would play it. I would stream it. I would be in love with it. I know I would. Month unknown. Day unknown. Sunny. Today, I will leave the gull wings. From now on, I will continue my story without help from anybody else. I am sure that I will face some hardships in the coming days, but I am not afraid. More than anything, I'm excited. What wonderful adventures and discoveries await me out there. I'm saying goodbye to my old self and to this diary. Hoping that one day my new path will again converge with yours. Aww. It all begins with this first step. My new story. Oh, that was a cute little one. Final Fantasy X and Unreal Engine 5, holy crap. Yeah, oh, wait, wait I read that message already. <laughs> I don't know why that was so, I thought that was a new message. Yeah, that would be so cool. Oh my God, I would love that. <clears throat> I would delete all my games and just play that religiously for real. I think I I think I would be obsessed. Like I think I would play that game until I had beaten everything in it, like 100%, and I don't think I would touch any other game until I was until I was done. You know what I mean? Like, once I started it, I would not stop. Uh, yeah, that would be amazing. All right. Oh, 
Okay, go Barong. You got this. Okay, maybe we will finish chapter three. Now that I sped up the battling, it's really not taking that long. So we have we have four left. We've done we've done five so far, and we're only halfway through. So yeah, we should we should definitely finish all the fiend tales and, and hopefully finish chapter three too. I also love Legend of Dragon Remake, like Final Fantasy VII. That would be cool, too. That would be cool, too. I'm not as familiar with Legend of Dragon, um, but I did play it back in the day. But that would be a really neat remake. <clears throat> I don't know. I have, I have, like, a lot of mixed feelings about remakes sometimes because... Um, as a Pokemon fan, <gasps> I've seen some bad remakes. <laughs> so, you know, um, sometimes I think things like, mm, we do not need this remake. Um, but then there are remakes that are very good, you know? There are remakes that are very good. So then I think about like, oh, maybe we should because it would bring in so many new fans and things, you know? But sometimes, <laughs> sometimes the advice is you should just go play the original. But I know for some people it's hard. Like it's hard to go play on the old tech and, and it's hard to like look at the graphics and hear those sounds. You ever play Chrono Cross? Yes. Chrono Trigger, Chrono Trigger was my favorite RPG until Final Fantasy X came into being. Um, so yes, I have played Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross both. And I love Chrono Trigger very, very much. Very close to my heart. Chrono Trigger is definitely a game I would stream as well someday. Someday, maybe. Alright, he should be ready for his fiend tail. Now let's go look. <clears throat> if they had trophies back in PS1 and PS2, I'd have like a million trophies for real. For real. They did not do that for us back in the day, but that would be cool. Yeah. I'm a warrior of the Sharp Order, forgive my directness, but might you know something about the text known as a Bushido Manual? There are four such volumes that hold secrets of Bushido that have been passed down our order for generations. But, to our great shame, they've all been stolen from us. Only the leader of the order, the Chieftain, is privy to the secrets in the manuals. I've been charged by the Chieftain to capture the thieves and retrieve all of the manuals. I've recovered the first volume. I wrestled it from a leader of Flan Bur uh, Brigands, Hellfire Fl Flan Rojo. He was a fierce opponent who had mastery over fire. Three volumes remain. The second volume has been retrieved. Guillotine, Gemini, the leader of the Iron Giants had it. His skill with his giant sword made him a formidable opponent. Two volumes remain. The third volume has been retrieved. This one was held by a kamikaze cactuar of the cactuar assassins. He ran like the wind with slicing attacks like a butterfly's wings. Only one volume remains. Okay, show us the one volume. Who has it? Who has the one volume? It appears I have finally made it to the location of the final Bushido manual. 
So far, I've retrieved three Bushido manuals. The first from Hellfire, Flan Rojo. The second from Guillotine, Gemini. The third from Kamikaze Cactuar. They were all formidable opponents. Ahead is where they say the fourth and final Bushido manual is kept. The long journey of battle is nearing its end. I must fight to my last breath to retrieve it, no matter who or what stands before me. I go forth! <gasps> it's another Barong thing! Chieftain? What's going on here? Oh my god, it's the Chieftain! Of course it is. <laughs> the Mashido manuals are never stolen to begin with. Why would you do such a thing? The answer lies at the end of our battle. It looks like I have no choice. <laughs> you must fight your chieftain. Oh my god. <gasps> this ends now. Quadruple attack. You have grown strong. This is as it should be. I've searched long for one to pass along the Bushido manuals to. Now take them. You are a worthy successor. But this is not. Do not grieve, warrior. I know now that the true meaning of Bushido is to find one who will succeed your will. Chieftain! It was here I succeeded the Chieftain's Bushido and became the 15th Chieftain of our tribe. Oh my gosh. Oh, Sharp Order has entered the Fiend Arena. Okay. There's a new mana game being made. Is there? What's it called? Guys, I'm not surprised, but I, I don't I'm not sure what you're what you're referring to. I don't think I've heard of it. Okay, uh we're gonna skip detonator for now because I'm nervous about that. I feel like that one might be annoying, because if it's anything like the other bomb we had to level up, like, and how much he blew himself up, um, yeah. Yeah, that was difficult. Oh, there it is, Black War. Okay. Visions of Mana looks really good. Oh, cool! The Mana games are pretty good. Okay, um, let's do... yeah, enter tournament. Which one is this? Is this Yawk 62 or Yao 71? Oh, I did Yao 71, okay. It's another jumpy robot. Last time we saw the jumpy robot, he was helping people up the elevator in uh, Mushroom Rock Road. So see what this one does. Oh, he learned Heal Drop. Wait, why aren't you just flaring him? Is he... Does he have a Reflect on? He must have... Yeah, he has a Reflect on. Dang it! Well, that was a waste. I hate when they do Reflect. It kind of makes the, it hard to do the Fiends. Okay. Let's try that again.
bad boys, bad boys. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? I'm gonna come for them. That's what I'm gonna do. Watch it. Boom. Done. Came for them. Next. I'm pretty sure after we do this battle, he's gonna have to tournament again because we had lost the first tournament, so. Pretty sure. I hate when my waterline itches. Does your eyeball ever do that? My eyeball does that all the time. The waterline gets so sensitive and itchy. I'm just gonna check. I don't think I don't think he's got all of his yet, but I just I just want to check. Oh yep, yep, he needs one more. Okay. Well, instead of doing a whole tournament, we'll just do a battle. Before. Yeah, Claret Dragon was easy to beat and gave a lot of experience. Let's do this one. There we go. Alright. Level up, level up, level up, level up. Nope. Okay. Unamas. There we go. Okay. Now we can do his fiend tail. Analysis failed. Warning. Data overload. Shinra analysis. The analysis drives are overheating. It's a thousand year old guard machina. It's the type they set up at the Xanarkin Dome, but that's all I've got for now. Analysis failed. Warning. Data overload. Shinra analysis. Hmm. Still having problems, but nothing is impossible for me. This Machina has rare data about Xanarkin inside that we have to access. I'll just have to have to up the analysis levels. Analysis failed. Warning. Data overload. Shinra analysis. Huh. I've decoded part of its memory. There's some rare visuals inside. Appears to be a visual record of Unalesca and Zeon. This machine must have been set up to guard Unalesca. Maybe it bore witness to some key historical events? I'll have to continue my analysis. Oh my god, really? Are we gonna get Unalesca and Zeon seen? Oh my gosh, okay. Analysis failed. Warning. Data overload. Shinra analysis. I limited my search to just Unalesca, but it's still overloading the system. This 1,000-year-old record shows her lover Zeon becoming the faith to destroy or to defeat the first sin. The lovers embrace and Unalesca vows to return safely. I get it now. This Machina was set to watch over Unalesca and Zeon. It continued to believe Unalesca's vow to return and waited for her at the dome, even a thousand years after she summoned the final Aeon and perished. Oh my gosh. What? Okay. Security protocols in progress. We will await your return, Lady Unalesca. Oh, she's not there no more, dude. You far surpassed the machine life expectancy. You've served your purpose. Yeah, do him a mercy, Shinra. Lady Unalesca, 
has departed for the far plane. She had a good life, protected dutifully by loyal machines. You turned off Shinra? Oh, yeah, he turned it off. Good night, Mr. Makina. That was nice of you, Shinra. That was very nice of you to do that for the Makina. Oh, and they watch on from the far plane. Or from the Via Infinito. Which is, we know that's where they actually are. Okay. Alright, Yak62, you're next. Oh, I meant to equip your stuff. Okay. Let's try that again. Alright, first one fast. Deleted. Last battle of the tournament. I feel like this the Raging River pair like gets to the end all the time, even though it doesn't look like they would be that strong. I, I wonder why the AI of the game chooses them to uh, be the winners of the tournament a lot of times. Go again. Decided to join us. She hop up behind me. It will show because Ash doesn't come in here that often. There she is. Look at that cute little kitty cat. That's just kitty cat, Ash. Someone must have taken over her normal spot for her to come in here. That's usually why she's in here. Because one of the other cats took over her spot.
All right, let's watch this Machina's bean tail. YAC, I think, is the YAC type. Right? Right. Ah, oh, not quite. Okay, okay, hang on. We gotta get him one more level. Let's do this soul quake. Let's do the earthworm. I like the earthworm. I think that'd be funny. Come on, flare him up. Boom. That is a cute cat, right, Geekstra? Ash is very cute. Ash is kind of a weirdo, though. She's like our, our funny cat. She doesn't really know how to play right, so like when the other cats try to play with her, a lot of times she just takes it as bullying and just doesn't want to play. Like, she just she just wants to chill and be pet all the time. She doesn't want to play around. And she doesn't like most people either, to be honest. So, like, she's a very, she's a very loner. She's a very loner kitty cat. There we go. Okay, we got him now. Oh. Oh, but I cannot read this. <laughs> uh... Shinra analysis, that's some pretty hefty protection. Might take a while to get through. Nothing's impossible for me, though. Okay, so it's encrypted. Ra... R-A-C-T-E? Shinra analysis, protection layer 2 cleared. Getting clearer, but tougher than expected. Sh... Shair... Sh Is it trying to say Shinra? Shinra analysis, protection layer 3 cleared. Just a little more. I've got this. Shinra! Kret... Shinra analysis, final layer cleared. Communication should be possible now. But what's my name doing in there? Yeah, what is your name doing in there, Shinra? Let's find out. When the gull wings weren't paying attention, I escaped the airship. What? I had learned a terrible secret. Shinra's secret, which I learned by coincidence at the arena. What? But this secret, should it really be revealed? What am I saying? What? Telling the world about this secret? Why do you care about Shinra's secret? What is Shinra's secret? is the reason I deactivated the protection. What? It's a mocking a meeting. <laughs> Emergency situation. Attention, all machines of this world. Shinra of the Gull Wings is. Oh. He's what? Protection is back online. What the heck, Shinra? I want to learn your secret. I can't tell anyone now. Shinra, I want to know. Why won't you share your secret? with the, the player of this this game. That's rude. I need it. Oh my gosh. Okay, time to do the bomb, which is gonna be hopefully not too annoying, but probably annoying because he's gonna freaking explode himself. It's funny because the house I pets it for sometimes has a cat that doesn't like anyone. Oh, so you had one of those. Um, but she's always right by me when I'm there. She's so cute and loves to sleep near me when I stay the night. Aww. 
Well, I think, you know, a lot of cats that like, quote unquote, don't like anyone, they still don't want to be alone. Cats are still social creatures that like want to be around other creatures. You know what I mean? So like some cats just prefer to be around like one person at a time and some cats are better in groups, you know? So like that's that's what I think a lot of times when it comes to like, oh, this cat doesn't like anyone but they like me and it's like I think even cats that are very antisocial still don't want to be alone I don't think most cats truly want to be alone despite the like loner um reputation that cats have uh but I think they have that from people that don't actually interact with cats a lot you know what I mean anyway that's my hot take on on loner cats because like even though I say Ash doesn't like anyone like Ash still doesn't want to be all by herself you know she still wants to be around somebody. She just doesn't want to be in the in the same room that has like all the people, you know. Okay, he didn't explode himself that time. Maybe we are killing them really fast, and so the exploding himself thing is not going to be as big of a deal as the first bomb was. No, that's a really good point. Yeah, like, because you pet sit, right? So, like, you've interacted with a variety. Um, I mean, do you think that's basically true to your experience with kitty cats? Maybe it's just only feel comfortable around certain people. Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the case as well for a lot of cats. Like, it just takes them, it takes them a little bit longer to warm up. And so they're not like instantly going to be your friend most of the time. Um, and they, they, I think most cats find it very um, uncomfortable or impolite. I don't know how you would say it in a way that makes sense to a cat. But I think most cats are very find it very uncomfortable or very impolite. Somebody that like goes and immediately tries to get their attention upon first meeting. Like I just think like cats do not like that. They want to like go very slowly in the beginning and I think that if you respect that oh he did blow himself up if you respect that then like you can have a lot better success with getting the cat to be interested in interacting with you all cats like me for some reason I'll be sitting down and a random cat will come up yeah well because if you're not in their face and they get to approach first they're much more likely to like you um you know it's hard to not approach the kitty cats though because they're so cute but uh, but they, they like you much better if you don't immediately approach. Okay, so he's blowing himself up sometimes, but not every time. Hopefully two tournaments will be enough then. Hey, he blew himself up that time. Stop blowing yourself up. All right, winner, winner. Okay, we do need one more. All right, let's do it as a tournament, even though it's only one more. That way we at least get the fiend tail bonus if he blows himself up every time. We'll just do standard cup, so it's fast and easy. So we just need that fiend tail bonus at the end.
why bombs love blowing themselves up, I will, I do not understand. But uh, but they seem to enjoy it. Both this bomb and the other bomb that we leveled up just wanted to blow themselves up all the time, over and over. Did it again. That Charon. That Charon ability. But that's okay, because we'll get the Fiendtail bonus. It happened to me in Africa. A whole Pride Alliance came up to me and sat near me. I thought I was going to get attacked. You were so lucky you didn't. Holy crap. <laughs> Those are what we call danger kitties. <laughs> oh my god, that would be insane, right? Right? Like, I've seen, like, the safaris where, like, the animals come up, like, way too close to the safari vehicle. And, like, that shit looks terrifying. You know, like, I want to see those animals a safe distance away from me, not, like, actually pet them. That would be insane. <laughs> like, like, I love animals. I love animals. But, you know, big respect for the wild ones being over there, and I can just see them. I couldn't do it because those animals sense fear. Yeah, right? Like, they're wild. They're crazy. I would be frightened. I would be, too. I would be, like, shit in my pants. I'd be like, oh, my God, someone please rescue me. I'm going to die. Okay, wait, why? Oh, did he not get a fiend tail bonus on the standard one? Do I have to? Because he's always too high level. He's too high level. I have to do the higher ones to get a fiend tail bonus. Okay, hang on. I guess we're doing Grand Cup. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would be like, I would be dying. I would be dying. I'd be so scared. I did camp one time in Colorado Springs and there was a pack of wolves near out the tent. I was too afraid to go out so I could, I could see them through my little vent. Wow. But it's smart, like you shouldn't go out, you know what I mean? <laughs> wolves are not dogs, you know? I'm sure some wolves are nice since, you know, we eventually did get dogs out of them, but you wouldn't want to be the one to take a chance on if it was a nice wolf pack or not a nice wolf pack, you know? So yeah, for sure. I'm trying to think if I've ever seen wolves in real life. I know I've seen like African animals in real life because I've been to Disney's Animal Kingdom a couple of times and been on the safari ride there. But I'm trying to think if I've ever seen like real life wolves, like in person. I, I don't think I have. I don't think I've seen like wolves at a zoo. Been to a wolf sanctuary down there, such majestic creatures. That's so cool. That's so fucking cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen wolves in real life. Because I'm trying to think of a zoo that had wolves, and I can't think of one that I've been to that, that had wolves. And we really don't have a lot of um, wolves around here. I mean, there's some, but not really. Like, we have, um, we have more coyotes um, around here. I have seen those one time. And I have heard a fox, <laughs> but never seen one in, the, in like, the forests around here. But yeah, wolves are fucking cool. I love them. I think they're neato, neato animals. Think of a coyote ten times in size. Yeah, that's what they're like. Wolf, real wolves are like gigantic, right? Like they're ridiculously huge. Okay, let's see the detonator. It's a pleasure to meet you. As you can surely tell, I'm a bomb. This may be surprising for you to hear, but I'd like to serve mankind to the best of my ability. Since I'm now a member of the Gullwings, I'd like to make my dreams a reality. I will approach you with any revelations I have and look forward to hearing your frank and honest opinions. I come up with an idea, everyone. What if you gave me to a child to use as a balloon? A bomb balloon! What a clever idea! My heart is dancing at the very thought. Shinra analysis. What if it explodes? <laughs> I have an even better idea for you this time. How about using me as a light source? A bomb light. Doesn't that sound explosively wondrous? I can barely wait for nightfall. Shinra analysis. Not happening. One more for you then. You can use my considerable mass as a paperweight. A bomb paperweight. It could become the latest fad throughout Spira. Such style. 
Shinra analysis. I suppose it would be good for holding something in place. Oh my gosh, what the heck? What the heck, detonator? What is happening? At Shinra's behest, I've decided to restart my life as a fiend by serving as a waitstone. <laughs> what? I will now exist solely for the benefit of humans. Huh? Who was that girl you were walking with the other time? <gasps> Ooh, Isaru! That was... Uh, that was a tourist. Yeah, she needed a guide to take her around some historical ruins. Ruins? Then why did you go to the cave at Gagazet? That cave is sacred site to many summoners that many summoners used to travel through. Historical? Sacred? Don't make me laugh. This is not the age of Yevon anymore. What good is there in paying homage to places like that? Ah, uh, some people in distress. I cannot just stand idly by. What? <gasps> oh, fireworks. What is that? Huh? Isn't that something you set up to attract customers? No, I... But wouldn't you say it's a miracle worthy of a sacred site? Perhaps. Shinra. The promise of being a paperweight will have to wait. Aww. Okay, Saru, now stop cheating on your girlfriend. Holy fuck. What's wrong with you? Jesus. All right. Y'all, that's all the fiend tales in this chapter. Um, I kind of can't believe it. I kind of can't believe it. So, okay. Oh, super speed. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What is happening? There we go. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go take a peek. I just want to see, because we... Yeah, it just... Yeah, for real. When they, uh, oversoul in the arena like that, it just, it doesn't count. It really doesn't. Oh, that's so annoying. Okay. I know everything. I know you do, Shenra. Mm, bestiary. Okay, so I definitely need to go through and make sure that I'm not missing. Because this is the Fiendtail Bestiary. Make sure I'm not missing ones that I, I should have by now. But like, I'm not, the list that I got that I'm using for this, I got online. So I'm just not sure how that's gonna go. So like, you know, <laughs> you know? So like, I don't know how I'm gonna know if I'm missing ones. Um, we're just gonna have to look at the end, I think. But this is this is where you can see it, and like you can you can go in here and you can re you can rewatch the fiend tales, which I guess I never really explained before. But you can, so like you can go back and rewatch your favorites after you've unlocked them this way. So yeah, return to the creature creator menu. Yes. Okay. So um, here's what we're gonna do. Here's what we're gonna do. We are going to go ahead and end the episode there. Um, so for y'all watching the recording on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day.